Hello, tiny friends. Welcome back. Welcome to day five of 12 days of a vintage Christmas, where each day I'll put together a part of this free printable. This is a vintage Christmas decoration box set. Comes with 13 boxes and six cards. In day one, I gave all the information to this free printable, along with some helpful hints and suggestions that may help you when creating this set. You'll find the link in the description box below to this free printable where you can print it out or you can download it and save it to your computer. Just scroll down to the words that say Christmas boxes underneath the first image. It may be blue, it may not be, depending on what kind of device you're using to log in. Just click on those words and this PDF will pop up. And if you've missed any of the previous days, you'll find a link to the playlist in the description box as well. So thank you for joining in with me during this Christmas special. You might want to grab yourself a cup of Christmas cheer and hold on to your sleigh bells because today I'll be making Christmas lights. And it turns out to be one of my favorite pieces from this Christmas project. So let's get started. I'm going to begin with putting these boxes together and originally I thought there was four light boxes but it turns out that the boxes have images on the inside of the bottom of the box. So there's two light boxes. This is one of those boxes that have black lines on it. So you just want to make sure you're folding those black lines on the inside of the box. It will also come with an insert. So now that the first box is put together, I'm going to go ahead and put the second box together. I'm just flipping them upside down and pressing firmly on them. It looks like I'm pressing super hard and in my mind I'm <laughs> really praying that I don't crush them. But it just gives them a nice crisp flat shape to the top. These boxes are so stinking cute. So now I'm going to work on the inserts and the bigger spaces where the lights will go. Then you got two spaces that are really, really tiny and there's not much room to fold those, but you'll be folding those creases to the back of the insert. I just kind of assumed that the two sections that you fold over will form some sort of triangle shaped base so that you can stand these inserts up and display your lights on. You can create any type of lights you would like, but if you're choosing to use seed beads like the original picture, you can place them on either card, but on the smaller card, you can fit two rows of nine seed beads. So you should be able to get 18 beads on this smaller card. I'll be creating those bigger bulbs of vintage lights. Okay, my inserts are folded back and it was a bit of a challenge because they're so tiny. So in this case, one of those creasing tools would be super helpful if you had one of those. Mine look a little wonky and that's okay because I'm gonna age them in the end anyways, but I just put a little bit of glue on the top part and glued it to the back of the box. You just wanna take your time and if you have a pair of patience pants, you might want to put those on. <laughs> I'm going to use polymer clay to create my lights and I have all the primary colors. Um, I'm also going to add a little bit of transparency. These two colors are Fimo Effect colors and they already have transparent clay in them. So when they dry, you'll be able to see that. But I'm going to add it to the other colors so that you can see what it looks like if you choose to go this route. This is actually some scrap orange that I mixed two different colors together when I was making polymer clay pumpkins, but it's not gonna matter. To begin with, I'm just taking tiny bits of the clay. I'm gonna make a few of each color and I'm just gonna roll them into an egg shape. And then at one end, I'm gonna roll it a little more pointy than the other end and I'm just gonna work them into a shape that I'm happy with.
For my light cord, I'm using a wire. It was just a piece of scrap wire that I found. You can use whatever type of string or embroidery thread or wire you would like if you choose to add a cord to your lights. I just bent mine in a wavy shape and then around the back and I pinched it really tightly so I didn't need any glue for that. If you're mixing in transparent clay with your colors, this is what they'll look like. For the vintage lights that I'll be making today, they need to be more of an opaque color. So I'm gonna paint these to create the colors that I would like. I just did this step so that you can see what it would look like if you mix the two together in case you would like your lights to look like this. To match the colors of the real vintage light bulbs that I'm trying to create, I mixed a little bit of white with these three colors and I'm also creating some white light bulbs. The clay was super dirty after working with the other colors so I'm just painting those white as well and that's okay. But it turned out that the red and the orange didn't really need to be painted. They were pretty good the way they were. So now my lights are dried, I'm just taking a little bit of tacky glue and I'm dipping the flatter end in the tacky glue and onto a seed bead. The black seed bead will act as a light bulb base that will be attached to the cord. Now it's time to add the bulbs to the cord. I'm gonna use tacky glue, put a good amount on the card, and then lay down the bulbs and begin to arrange them how I want them to sit. For the second box of lights, I'm going to use the extra vintage light bulbs and I'm just going to create like a spare box of replacement bulbs. I won't be adding a cord to this box and I probably shouldn't have added the seed beads since the base is normally attached to the cord, but I've seen boxes where the lights look like this as well. So I'm just going to glue them to the card so it looks like they're all standing straight up in the box. I'm using a green sharpie marker to cover up the white edges. I also use a brown one to add some more aging.
Okay, tiny friends, that's it for day five. These lights aren't really perfect, but they're perfectly aged and I absolutely adore them. So let me know what you thought in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I hope you come back to see me for day six to see what I create in this 12 days of a vintage Christmas. Until next time, tiny friends, you all have a lovely day and happy holidays.